Jamaica in numer numerology, the number eight represents victory, prosperity, and overcoming. The Japanese says it's a lucky number, and on this eighth edition of the Champions Cup, Kleiner College will be hoping that luck can rain down on them. They start their title defense against a very rejuvenated Mona High team. It's all live from Sabina Park here in Kingston. It's a pretty hot afternoon here in Kingston. Of course, we're headed into the evening as well. It's 29 degrees Celsius right now with humidity at 60%. Hello and welcome to Sabina Park. My name is Gerard Morrisili. It's the first match in the Champions Cup. Of course, we know that the best Manning Cup teams up against the best the Costa Cup teams, of course, in the season. And we are all live here at Sabina Park. My name is Gerard Morrisili and with me is Jenny Robinson. Yes, Gerard, we're back here again. Um, Sabina Park, the home of cricket, but also great football. Jamaica Premier League finals in July and if we recall Champions Cup final back in 2014 with Jamaica College yeah, and right. Holy Trinity. Right now where we're here it all again. started. Yes. Yeah, and we were here opening day as well. So we're back here again for the first time this season and of course we look forward yeah, to seeing some goals that will be scored here in this match between Carnegie College and Mona High, of course, the mounted title defense looking for a repeat, which has never been done before. Uh, but before we look at that game, before we look at the game, let's take a look at some of the top five well, the top five goals this season. Holding. Oh, here they have an opportunity here. Can they make it 1-1? Keeper stood still. The ball was struck straight to him from Rajay Kane. And the rickets coming up trumps for Central High. That was the really big opportunity for Tasha Scolding as it goes the other way now through Gordon. Shane Gordon! <laughs> And Pinnock struggling as well, the Mona number 11, looking to get him away there. He's really struggling and limping. He's been limping for quite a while. Yeah. A reference from range, oh my word! Oh my word! What a ferocious strike! And poor old Rohan Milford could do nothing about it! This consulate is here, Ron Milford. Looking back as he sat down, he looked so sad. But this man has all the praise. Look at that strike. Play 
again from Clarence College. The presence of mind to bring that ball back from Dixon. Or make that ball back to Malachi Douglas. Very brilliant pass and a one-time finish into the far triangle. You can't find it much better than that from that position. Malachi Douglas from Kellett's in the part of Clarendon. Yeah, the hometown boy has done well for his school. Actually, his goal tally as well, now six. Yes, Gibbs could get the follow-up. Shakes, set, foot long, and in! A super goal out of nothing! Samuel Shakes! Rattles Charlie Smith! What a fantastic effort that from Samuel Shakes, the man formerly of Heidel, saw the opportunity. Carl Cunningham was there waving for help and he couldn't find any. Beaten. Jenny and our viewers, five fantastic goals there. Yes, pretty exciting. I'm just wondering what our other host, Kimani O'Sullivan, is thinking, Gerard. Yeah, if he were here right now, what would Kimani say to us about these goals? Guys, guys, guys. Oh, here he is. <laughs> I'm right here. You can't <laughs> see goals like that and not expect me to be here. Kimani, you know? what are you doing here, first things? <laughs> what are you doing here? Guys, remember we were the ones to kick off the season here at Sabina <laughs> Park, so it's only right that the a team is back together right <laughs> yes. but i'm kind of shocked to not see that goal by Mattis on his left foot near post far be high up in the yeah that was one of my honorable mentions uh Janine, what do you think about the goals well i agree with the number one i just feel like romero and thomas should go up a little bit on that ladder that goal to me was quite outstanding well i don't have any issues with the top five i just wish i'm very sorry that Mattis did in fact uh lose out miss out just narrowly um of course that finish uh, we talked about that kimani a lot. and we talked about how uh that finish even though you're you took shades i took mattis and that goal definitely the difficulty of it and the pass what up with the pass <laughs> to set up the goal it was it was a really everything really about the goal, goal was scrumptious gerard and you know a goal like that requires a celebration as iconic you know a celebration sort of like <laughs> you know that's a cristiano ronaldo so Great goals. Yeah, so fantastic goals. I'm sure we'll see some more fantastic goals throughout the rest of the season and start probably starting with this, uh, this match up today. Match. Yeah. So, but before we get to that, we'll take a break. When we come back, we saw a lot more from Sabina Park.
Welcome back to Sabina Park. Of course, it's the first match in the Champions Cup of the best the Costa Cup teams, I should have said, the semi finalists from the De Costa Cup and the semi finalists from the Money Cup now clashing with each other. Jenny, we're looking forward to this one with Clarendon and Mona, the defending champions versus debutants. Yes, we are excited. So was Kimani, but we had to tell him go back up in the stands. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just here to watch some football. It's not really working today. So you have us. We're still here, but we'll yes. take it away. <laughs> yes, I'm excited for today's match. I think Mona, they, well, new, I don't want to call them the new kids on the block, but this is the debut match for them in the Champions Cup. And they want to make their name as well as Clarendon College you know they but, won it last year it's probably but, their territory uh, Clarendon College now have a task ahead of them because they're the well they're in position to repeat no one has ever repeated as champions as we look at the list of them here Jamaica College winning the first time uh, Kingston College the only team to win twice uh, back in 2017 and 2019 of course they would have won the Manic Cup in 2018 for the first time in almost uh, over, 30, over years. 30 years and uh, <laughs> St. George's College they've been able to hold but the only and also women's boys but the only two rural schools to ever hold this championship Cornwall College in and, 2018 and Clarendon last season so they have a bit of a task as you saw their viewers and Jenny no team being able to repeat, repeat as champions yeah so this the draw uh, of course the seeded teams were the ones who finished at the top of the table in their groups in the semi-finals for the Dakota Cup the seeded teams were Manchester High and Clarina College of course Manchester High finishing the top of zone A and Clarina College at the top of zone B and uh, Kingston College and Jamaica, Jamaica College, College the two teams that would have been the seeded teams in the Manning Cup these are the quarterfinal matchups Jenny yes well we were there at the draw yeah. and it was pretty surprising when we heard the first first draw Clarendon College Mona how you'll see that today Jamaica College and Mannings they're down by Stets yeah Manchester High and St. Andrew Technical as well at Stets this this match should be going on or yeah. about to finish and Kingston College versus Central High we'll see that later today yeah six o'clock so we'll see uh, Clarendon They've had a pretty good uh, season up until this point. Undefeated in the quarterfinals, were able to knock off their last match against Dintel, send them home with four goals in the net. And what a season they've been having so far. Clarendon on the hunt to win back the, the Costa Cup that they've won nine times before. So 2-0 against Central High. Central High creeping into the Champions Cup, into the semifinals with that assist from Clarendon College. And they're also uh, debutants. And they're also debutants, yes. Uh, Clarendon College also beating Edwin Allen 1-0. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, that 4-0 passing of uh, Din Till Technical. When you look at Mona High, though, they've too had a pretty good quarter final. Of course, only losing to Kingston College 4 2 in the last match, 4 0 against Charlie Smith and 1 0 against St. George's College. So, this should be a pretty good game, Jenny. Yes, pretty exciting. I think that, that well, losing to Kingston College, you know, it will rile up something inside of them. We don't have uh, any, any recent history or yeah. any history with Clarendon College and Mona except a pre season match where they both played each other and that was ended in a goal of Nil Al. Yeah, so let's learn a little bit now about Clarendon College, of course, the school that is located in Chapleton, the northern side of Clarendon, and they were founded in 1942, celebrating 80 years. Blue and yellow, the colors that they support, 1,703 students in the school. Uh, they have one Champions Cup, and of course, they have nine Costa Cup titles, and their motto simply says, persevere and excel. Well, Jenny had a chat with their coach, regarded as one of the best schoolboy football players ever, and his name is Lenny Hyde. Let's hear what he had to say to her. Coach Hyde, no school has successfully de defended the Issa Champions Cup. You face a team today that has only lost one match this season and poses no fear towards your team. Do you find this intimidating? No, not at all, you know. We, we, are, we are used to these occasions, you know. We are a season team in the league for a, a couple of years now, so we, we, we are ready for any challenges that come out there. We are playing pretty well this season so far, so we just have to go out there confident and play our brand of football today. Well, Coach, in a recent article, you spoke about your players need to win at these stages of the competition. How have you been able to mentally prepare them for the Champions Cup? They are mentally preparing me. You know, how they train, the attitude that they're showing, the discipline that they're showing, that motivates me. You know, and they're doing it all 
I'm very confident in these guys. They are doing everything we haven't lost a game all season. So it's, it's good for us to come up here and show our skills today in Kingston. Well, let's talk about your opponents. There's a lot of theatre surrounding this Mona team. What are your thoughts on them and how do you think they are different from the rest of opponents you face so far this season? Well, uh, well, you know, they have a good coach. You know, they, 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 they have been playing together for a while. You know, there's an academy. Some academy youngsters have been together for a while. So I, I expect a tough game from them. I respect them. But on the day is what you do on the day. And I'm very confident that we can go out there and, and defend our title. To look at the water player to watch, and his name is Malachi Douglas. He'll be suiting up in the number seven jersey for Clarendon College. Five goals this season to go with six assists, and he's really been the man for this team. And he would hope that he can continue that good form and supply those assists for his Clarendon College team. We're in the number nine jersey today. But yeah, now no. let's take a look at the Mona High School facts. This school was founded in 1979, 43 years of existence. They were the colors red and cream, a population of 1,460 students, no champion cup titles, and we'll, and we'll be looking if, to see if they can get one this time around. Their motto, to learn, to love, and to serve. Gerard, earlier today you spoke with their coach, Craig Butler. Coach, it has been a historic uh, season for Mona High. When you look back at how things have gone up until this point, how do you put into words the things that the boys have done so far? I think it's, um, it's positive. It's positive for Mona. It's positive for the country. Positive for everyone involved. And I believe that the example set by Mona um, hopefully will be followed by the rest of the nation and we can have a national football system. Yeah, well you're in your first Champions Cup opening against Clarendon College who's been here eight times before. Uh, we know that your team is always up for a challenge. So what's the plan to ensure that inexperience overcomes experience? I'm sure Clarendon College's inexperience won't be too bad for them today. <laughs> All right, coach, because you could never be speaking about Mona. <laughs> well, Mona High is a, a team that loves to attack and keep the ball once they're in possession. Um, are you sticking with that strategy or do you tweak the system a little bit for today's match? No. One sticks to what they're good at, what they know, and it will be a lesson in development for everyone. Um, for us, um, it's not whether you win the game or lose the game, it's how you play it which is important. Now let's look at the digital player to watch. His name is Zane Pinnock. He wears number 11. This is not his first appearance. He has 13 appearances and 16 goals right behind his teammate Don Hugh Mitchell with 19 goals. They're on their way for this golden boat. He's 18 years of age and this is his second season. So we'll be looking for great things from him today. Well, Gerard, exciting football today. Yep. Mona High, debutants, yep. Clarendon College. Looking to repeat as champions. And we have all the action for you. Don't go anywhere. Everyone is in the house. Damien Nanalo, I just saw him. And uh, we'll take a break now. When we come back, you'll be hearing from our commentary team. Ricardo Chambers is the lead. And he's joined by his analyst, Dean Smith. Don't go anywhere.
create lasting memories memories of what the game really should look like at this level quality galore from the coaches bench to the fresh young talent they guide brace yourselves it has the makings of a classic the first round draw could not have thrown up a more compelling clash my name ricardo chambers alongside dean smith for this encounter Well, this is certainly a matchup of great magnitude, Ricardo Chambers. Yeah, we certainly couldn't have asked for anything better. The start of the, the Champions Cup and Clarendon College and Mona, two teams with great attacking prowess, with attractive football. Yeah, they have a treat for us, I'm sure. And this should be very, very special. Teams that are beautiful on the eye to watch. Attacking teams that pass the ball so well, Clarendon College especially. And Mona, they have their system that, well, had a blip the other day, but I'm sure they are committed to that system. Yeah, players, administrators, sponsors going through the meet and greet. And Jamaica national defender Damien Lowe, part of the meeting party, representing sponsors at Digicel. Last season, did have him as part of our commentary team for a couple of matches. Well, one match, is it one match? It was to be a couple, but the second one was rained out. The officials for this contest. Akita Nicholson in the middle, Kenny Bryant, first assistant, Shadeen Morrison, second assistant. Well, let's meet the teams for this contest. There's the lineup for Clarendon College. Romeo Daniels in goal. Akima Jones, Devontae Hodges, Malachi Douglas, Christopher Hall, Latiba Green, Kahim Dixon, their leading scorer with 13 this season. Marquis Reed, what a talent he is. Theon QP, Adrian McNeil, and Christoph Graham. They are coached by Lenworth Hyde, who is celebrating a birthday today. Well, let's see if they can give him a birthday present to Lenworth Hyde. They line up as a 4 3 3. Great action on the wings, especially for Marcus Reed. Sometimes comes into the middle of the park as well. Such great, pa such a great pass of the ball, and they have action through Christoph Hall as well. Really knows how to take on defenders, as well as Kahim Dixon. A really, really good team, Clarendon College. The captains. Malachi Douglas, Akeem Bernard. They could well come face to face at some point in this contest. Let's be the Mona team. And very good news for Mona as well because they have Dante Peralto and Kishane Gordon back in the lineup. Remember, they missed the Kingston College game last week because of card suspension. Akeem Bernard in goal. Daniel Mitchell, their leading scorer with 19. Demoy Whitfield, Damari and Thomas. Fabulous striker of the football. Rabina Gordon, Denzel McKenzie, Zayn Pinnock. He's celebrating his 18th birthday today. Adriana Vassal and Carlton Brown. Craig Butler, the technical director of this lineup. Yeah, they had a, a blip earlier in uh, the competition when they face Kingston College in the quarterfinal encounter, but they have, I'm sure, uh, as assessed the damage and they are ready to deliver. Peralto, always playing in the attack in front for them, especially in the start of the games. He's back. Kishane Gordon, they play through him a lot. Denzel McKenzie had to step up in the, the game, their last game against Kingston College. And let's see how he continues on that fine vein of, vein of form. Yeah, Peralto getting the game going for Mona Height. Playing in their first Champions Cup. Historic qualification to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup for them. Clarendon College, the defending champions. 
Of course, this All Island knockout competition started as the Super Cup in 2014. Mono on the attack with Gordon right away getting a cross in. That's headed away. Comes out to Thomas who heads it forward once more. Says Thomas again, not afraid to shoot, but his shot is charged down by Christoph Graham for Clarendon College. Yeah, they definitely get going quickly, Mona. And uh, Clarendon College would have had a, an encounter like that midweek against Dintil where they pressed them very early, but they were able to withstand the pressure. Let's see how they face the Mona pressure. Their technical director, Lenra Hyde, pointing out in the build-up to this game, rightly so, that his team is unbeaten and they head forward. Douglas eventually loses possession. So yes, that's Lenworth Hyde, Clarendon College uh, standout player, now coach. Of course, has had stints in the national setup as well, and has won the titles at the Premier League level. An expert coach, and yeah, he has said that he really loves playing this, this coaching this uh, particular bunch of players, really disciplined, and they have adapted to his system, always attacking, always passing the ball so expertly. Clarendon College. They've been a, a standout team since him taking the helms in 2017. They certainly have been great pedigree in this competition. But Clarendon College have lost to Manning Cup teams on five occasions in the All-Island knockout, whether it be the Super Cup or the Champions Cup. Only once in the history of this competition have they lost to at the Costa Cup outfit. There is Craig Butler. Ever confident. Great belief in his system and the way his team plays. They're going to need every bit of it if they are to get the better of this kind of college team this afternoon. The corner kick away from the target. And it's headed safely to Romeo Daniels in goal. Quite windy conditions here. That will definitely affect how they deliver the balls from corners and from free kicks. They have to factor that in in the deliveries and the passings as well. game certainly has the potential to be an absolute cracker. Throw for Clarendon College through Jones. Kick for Dixon. Clearance coming for Mona. Back to Akima Jones. Slips one forward. Mona defense equal to the task. Clarendon College such a wonderful passing team as Jones gets it again, slips it forward for Douglas who leaves it for Hull. Hull trying to cut inside. He's well marked by Adriana Vassell. They will win a corner kick though Clarendon College, their first of the encounter. Yeah, the, the aggressive pressing of Mona. Yeah, they take it short and it's fired in. Clarendon College on the front foot. Left footed shot over the top. Marcus Reed. He's to be watched. Yeah, we'll see a lot of him today. And I'm sure throughout the rest of the schoolboy football season, such a great player. Easy on the eye, easy on the ball. Fires with two feet. Yeah, he's dangerous. Yeah, they'll definitely have to watch him. Mona in possession. Ball inside the box. The header is not bad, but it's right at goalkeeper Romeo Daniels. Denzel McKenzie there on the receiving end of that ball in the box. Doing good to place the head on target. Good work coming from Robino Gordon. Celebrated a birthday only five days ago. His teammate Zane Pinnock celebrating his 19th birthday today. 
And the technical director for Clarendon College, Lenworth Hyde, also celebrating a birthday. Someone will be disappointed at the end of this. Yeah, you wonder who. I was just about to say that one of them would have a bit of sorrow on their cake. Gordon's ball is cut on. Hull comes under a challenge and a very good challenge from Rubino Gordon as well. And then College retained possession though. And the attack switches over onto the left hand side. And are battling for the football and winning it. To Peralto. Peralto chesting it into Gordon. They're still bouncing around the dangerous area, but the clearance comes now out to Rubino Gordon. His pass is well cut out. Clarendon College. Hull just giving the ball away there. And Gordon doing the same. Akima Jones heads forward now for Clarendon College. Oh, what a delightful ball to Dixon, who can't get the shot away. And then what looked like an attempted cross was away from Christoph Graham. Yeah, Dixon really will look back and say, I should have really buried that one. But there are so many factors. I'm sure the wind would have played it away from him as well. Just slightly. Couldn't get the, the contact that he would need. But the defensive frailties of this Mona system exposed because they have a lot of space to the flanks of the two central defenders that they use. Mona and Clarendon College did well there to play the ball in for Dixon. Yeah, Dixon has scored 13 goals this season for Clarendon College. Knows what he's doing in front of goal. That's a lovely ball over to Kishane Gordon. Comes face to face with Jones. Gets the better of him. Gets the cross inside. The ball is bouncing around the area. And Compton Brown's shot eventually goes wide. Yeah, well, this is uh, the action counter that we expected, Ricardo. Both teams giving as much as uh, they're receiving. The hustle of the Mona team, they really press in numbers. They get behind and yeah, lots of problems here for Clarendon College. And they must count themselves blessed to get away unscathed. And remember, Counted Brown gave away two penalties in the defeat to Kingston College a week ago in their Manning Cup quarterfinal did redeem himself though won a penalty for his team in the second half to which got them level but eventually Kingston College would find the winner and then some to win 4-2 in that encounter it was a thrilling contest one of the games of the season if not the game of the season Gordon plays into the midfield to McKenzie. McKenzie quickly up front. Mona on the front foot. This is where they like to be. And they are dangerous here. Oh, that's a lovely ball. The flag stays down. Yeah, great link up play that between Zane Finnock and uh, Kishane Gordon. Gordon, I spoke with him after that loss against Kingston College. He said the team loves to play through him and that ball came to him. But couldn't get the, the better of the control and it gave Clarendon... McKenzie! Well, he can't shoot from distance, Denzel McKenzie. That one wide of the mark. Yeah. Great attempt. And that's what I like about Mona. they certainly not afraid to shoot from any angle, from any distance as well. They're heading forward again. Just starting to take control of the game a little bit now. Mona High, but they're always susceptible on the counter. So part of their strategy has to be to, to lock down the passing game of Clarendon College, prevent them from stringing together the, the, the kind of passes that gets their rhythm going. And they use a lot of numbers to do that, but that leaves them susceptible at the back. And Clarendon College, certainly they have the, the passing ability to play them play a, a ball through over the top. Douglas for Clarendon College. Runs into traffic. Hodges. 
kicks it forward to Johns. Dicks it for Hull. Decisive challenge coming in from Rubino Gordon. And the throw coming up for Clarendon College. Probably having a few words with Rubino Gordon. Being spoken to by the referee. With a throw. This produced eight assists this season. Akima Jones, he gets clipped and wins a free kick for his team. The Cracknell College fullback will take it as well. Jones with the delivery to the back post. The header weak from Christopher Hall. And the easy for goalkeeper Akeem Bernard. So Clarendon College, they stick to their 4-3-3 system. Mona seems to employ a 2-5-3. Mona's play, they definitely need good ball handlers because they use a lot of aerial balls as well and uh, that technical efficiency has been a trait of this team this season and last season too and they definitely need a lot of physical fitness because of how they set up trying to defend in the middle of the park early up the pitch as well Dixon picks out Hall Clarendon College heading forward again but that man Rapino Gordon in the way once more very good 13 minutes for him doing a brilliant job of breaking up play for the Mona team QP for Green Green spreads it for the left side for Reed He's cross-headed away out of the heart of defense. They're a patient team, this kind of college team. Hall slips it into the path of Malachi Douglas, but a little bit too much weight on it goes behind for a goal kick. Clarendon College on that particular uh, set of plays they were trying to use with to spread the Mona team and open up space for themselves didn't work in their favour but that strategy certainly can work if they are to get it together Hall not being given the room to operate here was the king for Douglas Dixon picks out Hall comes on the pressure right away does well to get a shot off but it's right at Bernard spoke about the fact that Clarendon College have lost five times in the All-Ireland knockout to teams from the Manning Cup as we're about to see the first card of the contest it goes to Denzel McKenzie yeah a bit fortunate there just to get that McKenzie almost a two-footed cha- challenge Yellow card in the 15th minute. Free kick for the defending champions. Looking for the breakthrough. Won't get it there. But yet their first time the All Island knockout was held 2014. It was the Super Cup then. And they lost to Holy Trinity 
in what would have been an offset, of course. Clarendon College went on to win the Da Costa Cup that 2014 season under the guidance of Patrick Jackie Walters. And since then, they've lost to the likes of Wilmers, Charlie Smith, Calabar. So some toughening many of those situations surprise defeats wouldn't be a surprise today if they were unable to get the better of this Mona team definitely the clash of the first round two high quality teams in many ways cancelling each other out so far yeah they certainly have From the run of play, you definitely couldn't pick a winner just yet. I said earlier that the physical fitness of this Mona team is going to be very important to be able to maintain the disturbance, you know, that they've been able to impose on Clannan College's This beauty, Marcus Reed, Fox Hall, inside the box, Reed with the cross, right up for nine, sneaks in, somehow that went in, Marcus Reed on its brilliant, at his brilliant best again, and Clarendon College, somehow are in front, call it a piece of brilliance, or a massive mistake in goal, Again, Clarendon College have great build-up in their play. Marcus Reed doing the business in the middle of the park, playing it through to Hull. Hull then played him through. He shifted flanks at Marcus Reed and he came all the way to the right, continued his run. As th there we see Hull getting the ball. Yeah, that's the kind of play that he's known for. And Akeem Bernard, oh my, oh my. He'd wish that wasn't on camera, I'm telling you. As he should. Real holder from a goalkeeper who has been very good all season. You don't expect that from him. We expect what we got from Marcus Reed, though. Ninth goal of the season, and now Mona must come from behind for the second time in a week. Well, they definitely have approved their metal against Kingston College in doing that. Let's see if they can maintain that kind of form against Clarendon College, who must now feel that, yeah, we have an upper hand in this game. Though we've not been passing as we normally do, we've been able to break through. And yeah, that's big for Clarendon College. A deserved goal based on the build-up, I must say. Will that knock the sails out of Mona? I don't think so. Nineteenth minute of the contest. Marauding performances all campaign for the Mona team. They will not want to suffer back-to-back -back defeats at this stage of the competition. Especially with a Manning Cup semi-final to come in a few days as well on Tuesday. A lot of doubts can creep in if they are unable to get the job done here. The Clarendon College fans very much in the venue at Sabina Park. And a number of Kingston College fans already here as well, unsurprisingly, as they await their encounter against Central which will follow this first matchup. Matthew Hibbert leading the line on the bench there for Mona. Not a happy looking Mona bench and no surprise. They find themselves behind and this is the reason. Reed to Hall. Continuing his run, Reed. And then that. Yeah. And no coach can really account for those kinds of errors. 
but you do, you can't count on the brilliance of a Marcus Reed. He's been doing it all season. That game against Froome, he was so pivotal, breaking down the Froome defense. In all games, really, midweek against Dintil, struck, was saved, then he got the follow-up as well. Yeah, one I really like this season, Marcus Reed. Peralto for Mona into the path of St. Reed. Won't be afraid to shoot. Oh, just over the top. That's what you'll get from St. Reed, the birthday boy. Celebrating his 19th. St. Pinnock, sorry. The birthday boy celebrating his 19th. Fiery left footed, right footed shot. Just over the top. Yeah, well, if we wondered if they'd roll over, no. St. Pinnock has the range and of shooting and we saw that there yeah give him a chance and he will go after it 16 goals this season for Pinnock successful campaign I remember last season he set out as one of his goals to score more than 15 and he has achieved that this season his cousin Sianis Selvin former outstanding hurdler for Calabar High School so great sporting talent runs in the family that would explain how in many occasions he seems to be hopping, but he's still able to run very fast. Jones. Good cross. And that's well cleared away by Mona, the Mona defense. And Rabina Gordon, ever present. 23rd minute of this contest. There he is, November boy as well, November 14th, he celebrated his birthday. Shane Gordon losing out, Paul Dixon calling for it, never got to him, now he gets it. Left it. And mopped up at the back by Daniel Mitchell. What a standout Daniel Mitchell has been. Very good central defender for Mona, but in many games he plays in an attacking uh, position, sometimes in the midfield, but against the mighty offensive threat of Clarendon College. Craig Butler says we need you to show up the back. Dixon lifts that one forward. Reed. Tassling. Oh, that's brilliant. Adriano Vassal. If it's pretty poking it behind. But Marcus Reed really turning it on here. Yes, he is. What a beautiful build up play. Has so much skill. Dazzling Gordon there at the byline. Yeah, Vassal had to intervene. There's a drive. That one has gone wide. Tion QP with the right-footed effort. Another look at that one. What was that? Yeah. It was actually Akima Jones who got the shot away.
Brennan College finding themselves in better positions now starving Mona of opportunities at the same time 26th minute of the contest these two teams they actually met in the preseason so many schoolboy teams play each other in the lead up to the schoolboy football season in Jamaica and that was a draw in that instance the Mona principal being a Clarendon College old boy would have been able to arrange such an encounter so Mona sh should still have lots of confidence though they find themselves a goal behind in the first half Kishin Gordon gets pushed over and another yellow card will come out the second of the contest the first to a Clarendon College player and they'll have a free kick Hodges there just checking Kishin Gordon who is really dangerous the son of a former Jamaican reggae boy, Devon Hodges. Rivoli fame. Back to back top goal scorer in the Premier League. Back in his heyday, Devon Hodges. coming up for Mona three man ball in place for Clarendon College Romeo Daniels in goal Peralta makes the run the shot towards the target and Daniels does well sick fans with a free kick coming from Denzel McKenzie Keeping arrow leading to the opening goal of the contest. Marcus Reed getting his ninth of the season. But it was brilliant build up play that led to it. Yeah, it certainly was. And yeah, we are so accustomed to seeing that from Clarendon College. All the players they seem to be very good ball handlers as well. for Jones. Jones does well. They are being closely marked. Especially Hall whenever he gets on the ball. Hodges gives up the free kick. Already on a yellow card. having a word with him and he doesn't want to get in the bad book of this referee Dwight Whitfield delivers a high ball well watched by Romeo Daniels. Danger lurks. Well done at the back for Clarendon College. with a throw Peralto Malachi Douglas Dixon has looked a frustrated figure this afternoon hasn't got the service that he thinks he has deserved Hall 
Jones. Oh, that's brilliantly done. Slips one forward. The keeper is off his line. This could be two. Oh, that's superb. Absolutely superb. Christoph Graham. Not for the first time today, finding himself in an attacking position. And delivers a fine, fine finish. Armona finished. The champions are tuning up in this quarter-final encounter. Great build-up play again from Clarendon College. Akima Jones was coming forward, playing it through to Christoph Graham, doing well to beat the keeper, who was well off his line. And not nibbling enough, and here they come. Here's another look at this fabulous goal rounded the keeper brilliantly and still had a defender to beat and managed to do it this one will be in the mix for one of the goals of the season when the top 10 is decided at the end of it all yeah the angle was definitely a tricky one for him here they come again this time with Kahim Dixon for Hall Hall loses possession They'll know they can't sleep on this Mona team, even from this position. Mona heading forward with Denza McKenzie. Peralta in front of him, decides to go for goal himself. Well wind of the mark. Yeah. A bit ambitious there from Denza McKenzie. Kishane Gordon was in a position he really could have played him in. And he was saying, what about me? He was just trying to do something special, Denzel McKenzie. Pino loses out. Jones. Hall. Douglas. Dixon. Douglas. Switches the angle of attack brilliantly. This could be three. No, flag is up. Yeah. A great level of anticipation across the Sabina Park as that play came, that ball came across. Mona down the other end. Easily handed at the back. Green. Atiba Green. Steps that one forward. Mitchell does well. Mona 2 0 down for the second consecutive weekend. In schoolboy football, last week was a Manning Cup qualifinal match. That one not as significant because they had already made it through to the Manning Cup semi finals. This one very much an important contest because it is a knockout situation. And the Clarendon College showing their quality in the first half an hour of this contest. Just saw the foul count here. Eight. Ramona, five for Clarendon College. Has been a physical encounter. No real clear cut opportunities for the Mona team, though. Well, Butler there showing that he has a control in his foot. a lot of thinking to do Craig Butler 35th minute Clarendon College leading by two goals to nil
wicket coming up for Clarendon College. I'll keep my Jones. Jones with the delivery. Very good delivery. The header is wide. Devontae Hodges. Came off a Mona player. And they will have a corner kick. What a lovely ball in. Yeah, it's really good. Hodges did well to rise above the rest of the defenders. Carlton Brown getting in the way and managing to squeeze that one behind for the corner kick. Result coming in from the first completed match of the Champions Cup for this season. St. Andrew Technical getting the better of Manchester High by a goal to nil. That game played in Santa Cruz. So St. Andrew Technical, the first semi-finalist in the competition. Reed possession given away free kick for Mona yeah the confidence is definitely growing for this uh, Clarendon College team Akima Jones uh, I really like how he plays good touch of the ball that he definitely has crowd support is growing as well inside Sabina Park and college fans, Kingston college fans. Pretty sure there are a lot of Mona fans in there as well. I wonder if Central will come with many fans for their game against KC later on. I keep it on looking to redeem himself. That won't get it done. Once we saw this Mona team there, it was always an understanding that they had very good attacking quality, but there have always been question marks about their defensive stoutness. And I think we've seen in the past few weekends that they can be breached, they have been breached. And if they seriously want to win a title this season, that is an area they will have to fix but Craig Butler has maintained that they will continue to play the way they play has been stubborn about his system one team that we saw push them in the earlier stage of the competition was Camperdown who at one point had a lead over them 3-2 they did well to fight back there Mona but you could recognize from that match and perhaps a lot more of the other earlier matches that there were some frailties and as the competition grew tougher you'd expect it to be exploited and we saw that against Kingston College seen it here against Glandon College well one thing is for sure they have goals in them can they find them this afternoon the delivery headed away comes out to Carlton Brown under a challenge from Malachi Douglas and Douglas wins the battle it's a throw seems to be getting ready to make a change is Mona Matthew Hibbert getting ready to come on let's see who Craig Butler is pulling out One goal this season, Matthew Hibbert. Did have an injury concern early in the campaign, which would have limited his playing time, I think. 
Mona. Just being closed down as soon as they get the football. Looking for Pinna. Touches. Alert to the danger. What a good player he has been for Clarendon College. Very solid defensively. Also a great attacking threat, especially from corner kicks and other dead ball situations. Has height, has the ability to really get up high. Yeah, so Hibbert replacing Carter Brown. scoring the winner for St. Andrew Technical in their match. Free kick. Fabulous player he is. You get the feeling that at this stage Mona needs a moment of brilliance to inspire them. Or maybe they need a pep talk like the one they got at halftime a week ago. I think they need both. Dixon, taken down, and a free kick coming up for Clarendon College. 43rd minute of this encounter. Dixon just left the ball behind him, turns well and gets the shot off. Bernard behind it on this occasion. Comes on to Jones. Slipped it to Douglas. Peralta with a chance to clean up now for Mona. Yeah, they put Peralta in a more defensive role as they brought on Matthew Hibbert. Hibbert. First touch, not great. McNeil sends it long. All shielded by Dundee Mitchell. Mona now seem to be playing a 3-4-3. Earlier it was 2-5-3. But they definitely need that extra defender because Clan and College, they use width, they have great pace, they have great skill. And Peralta, actually, he really wasn't as effective further up as I'm sure they would have liked. Better, better suited in the defensive position. Corner kick out of nothing for Mona. Headed behind by Atibo Green with Matthew Hibbert lurking. Let's see if Mona can make anything of this. Damoy Whitfield got them the first goal in their rally against Kingston College last week the corner kick not a bad one and they'll get another one Reed sent that one behind approaching half time can Mona pull one back Whitfield with the left footed delivery it's gone high over everyone and away for a Clarendon College throw. They will play Jamaica College in one semi-final of the Manning Cup on Tuesday. Kingston College to play St. Andrew Technical in the other semi-final. What a battle that has become, Kingston College versus St. Andrew Technical at the semi-final stage. Yeah, two highly anticipated matchups. Two minutes of time added at the end of the first half.
Mitchell wins it. Whitfield picks it up. Mona heading forward with Denzel McKenzie. And the play breaks down through Kishane Gordon. Trying to win it back and gives up a free kick. He's been a handful in the first half, Marcus Reed. Yeah, really has been. Gets back to help in the defensive third as well, Marcus Reed. A big revelation he has been this schoolboy football season. champions Clarendon College with the advantage by two goals to nil there's the halftime whistle two gorgeous build-ups this man quite influential in the first half Marcus Reed Clarendon College getting two goals the first one, a brilliant build-up, a mistake made by Akeem Bernard in goal. The second one, all brilliance, finished off by Christoph Graham. And on his birthday, he's not smiling right now, but he's on course for a big smile after 90 minutes. Half-time at Sabina Park, the defending champions, Clarendon College. Lead Mona by two goals to nil.
it's the Champions Cup. The defending champions, Clarendon College, lead Mona by two goals to nil. Let's have a look at the first down highlights. Clarendon College unbeaten this season. Mona coming up. A 4-2 defeat to Kingston College in the quarterfinal round of the Manning Cup last week. Marcus Reed making his intentions clear with that left-footed shot. It was over the top. In the early minutes of this encounter, both teams advancing into the opposition third. And this shot from Compton Brown going wide of the mark. Bit of a scramble here. Carlton Brown unlucky not to be able to get it off for Mona. St. Pinner, once he gets in a shooting position, he's going to take a shot. This time was a lovely pass into to Shane Gordon, who couldn't control and get the shot towards the target. Then Carmen College, Marcus Reed slipping that forward in the path of Christopher Hall, continuing his run brilliantly. And hitting right at goalkeeper Aki Bernard who made a massive mistake as the ball lodged into the back of the net for a Clarendon College lead. It was a great build up from Marcus Reed and Christop Christopher Hull but that mistake from Akeem Bernard something he'd like to forget. Clarendon College again Akeem Jones with a beautiful ball in to Christoph Graham rounded the keeper Akeem Bernard who was well off his line beat a defender and into the back of the net 2-0 Clarendon yeah, that was a beautiful finish. So easy for that to have gone wide. This header from Hodges taking a deflection and going behind for a corner kick. 2 0 is the way we ended the first half. Nine shots for Clarendon College, four on target, six for Mona, two on target, 18 fouls in the contest, 11 of them against Mona, seven against Clarendon College, one yellow card apiece, offside calls, two against Clarendon College, corner kick, seven in the encounter, four of them to Mona, two saves made by the Mona goalkeeper, Akeem Bernard, and one save made by Romeo Daniels for Clarendon College. Possession, Clarendon College. Bossing that at the moment, 59% of a possession. The champions leading by two goals to nil at the halftime break. Ginny with the fans in the stands, and there are a lot of them. And I'm here in the stands with the fans, fans from Clarendon College. This is not your first time here. Tell me how you feel so far. Well, it's a good feeling to be here, you know. First and foremost, we have to put God first above all things. Don't know. Yeah, man, it's a good feeling to be here. Defending champion, we're looking forward to defending this trophy. Well, the score is now 2 0. You guys have scored two goals so far. What do you have to say? Well, if you were the coach of Clarendon College, what would you tell this team? Continue the good work that we have been putting in and continue. Basically, we, we, they are sticking into the game plan. So, I don't really see anything that bad so far so we can continue further on we can make change if anything but we can continue the way we are right now and you have any, you have any player on the field that you are looking out for yeah Christopher Hall Rufi number 8 biggest thing biggest thing so you guys travel far very from Clarendon. Do you have anything that you have to say to anybody back in Clarendon? Well, Clarendon is a school with I would say the largest fan and supporter base in this country. So for all, everybody to be here, we are only here for one reason and that is to win. Well, Clarendon College they are here to win and we'll see if this is true right after the break. <laughs>
fighting action on your home of champions, Jamaica Premier League on Sportsmax 2. Sunday, Malines United versus Beer United. That's at 3 p.m. for Eastern Caribbean time. That match to be followed by Dundee Holden versus Cavalier at 5.30, 6.30 ECT. Monday, Waterhouse versus Shepparton Maroons at 5 p.m. 6 ECT. And Mount Pleasant Academy versus Portmore United at 7.30 p.m. 8.30 Eastern Caribbean time. Back at Savannah Park, second half action in the quarter-final round of the ASA Champions Cup. Knockout competition, Carandon College, the defending champions, leading Mona by two goals to nil. Marcus Reed with the opening goal in the 11th minute, helped on by goalkeeper Akeem Bernard. But if for nothing else, his brilliance deserved something from the play. Definitely has been really pivotal for Clarendon College in so many games and he has really not dropped off on that quality in this game. Christoph Graham, the number 21, getting the second goal for Clarendon College in the 31st minute. And we have the start of the second half. A week ago, Mona High rallied against Kingston College. They were 2-0 down at halftime. They managed to level proceedings before the hour mark. Kingston College eventually found a way to win that one. Mona going for the kill. They were looking for the victory because they wanted to top the group. Was that to be Kingston College came away 4-2 winners. Can they produce a comeback of similar proportions here? I was looking for Kashane Gordon, but the pass well ahead of him. task in front of Mona for this second half. Certainly two different teams, two different styles of play and we must say that the comeback that Mona had against Kingston College was against a different team. They sat deep, Clarendon College still very much playing to their own pattern of play. A lot of passing, using the skill of the individual players to great effect. an option to his left in the form of the number 12 Atibo Green, he was waiting for it and also Kahim Dixon, he was there waiting speculative in the end from Hull and well wide too to forget for Akeem Bernard so far. Vassil. Mackenzie leaving it for Whitfield, chipping in top of the box, cleared away. Gordon on the turn. Watches watches it behind for a goal kick. Kishane Gordon there on your screen. Five goals and six assists this season for him. Rabino Gordon. This pass cut out by Hodges. Throw coming up. Whitfield. Vassal. Douglas does well for Clarendon College. Malachi Douglas goes down in agony. For Clarendon College. Just being 
tackled hard there by Devoy Whitfield. Checked him. Referee, of course, giving him the call. Dixon spurts it wide for Reed. Reed cuts inside on the right foot. Position lost. No outlet though. For Pinna. Has to go back in defense. Real pressure put on here. Dixon. Start for service this afternoon. And uh, he loses position. What can Mona produce from here? Nothing. Reed. Now for CC. Very well to keep the ball in play. Pinnock picks it up for Mona. Slips it forward to Hibbert. Now with Thomas. Here's a drive with the left foot. Wider goalkeeper Romeo Daniels. Second shot. Such a shot from, from Denzel McKenzie for Mona. Trying to test the goalkeeper who has been equal to the task. Hasn't really been tested much. Romeo Daniels in goal for Clarendon College. Don't want to give them too many opportunities from that type of range because a few of the Mona boys can strike it really well from there. Romario and Thomas, Denton McKenzie have shown a lot of quality with long range efforts this season. Kishin Gordon too has a, scored something of worthy mention against Camperdown there. I think that was the opener for them against Camperdown in the first round. Their passing in the start of this second half has been a bit suspect though Mona. Not looking as sharp as we are accustomed to seeing them. And they have had a weak half. So you would expect them to be fairly well rested coming into this quarter-final bond encounter. The yellow card coming out here. Oh, it's been shown to the birthday boy, the birthday man. Then we're teacher Hyde, no nonsense referee. He would have been upset because he thought that Marcus Reed was fouled there by Mona, but instead uh, the throw in given to Mona. To second minute, Clarendon College leading Mona by two goals to nil. Pinnock gets taken down. And another card coming out, this time to Atiba Green. Yeah, the, it's becoming a bit silly now. Both teams have to just watch themselves. Clarendon College, they definitely don't want to give Mona a man advantage. Seems to be up now. Well, he is up. Dion Paley watching on it's a great cake loves his Jamaican dessert still as he should just behind him there Damien Nanalo with field they score from the top of the D last week against Kingston College might need a similar moment of brilliance to help get his team back into this one as well but you're not feeling the same type of energy you felt from the Mona outfit a week ago they were given a lot more space to develop the attacking thrust from Kingston College because they sat deep Clarendon College not employing that tactic at all Douglas 
thought he had done enough. Not quite. Yeah, the tempo of the Mona team has certainly not been the same. They work with the head of well wide of the mark coming from Zayn Pinnock's throw. And even Craig Butler a lot calmer than he was in that quarterfinal contest against Kingston College. Looking rather relaxed this afternoon. That's a surprise for me. I'm sure for many individuals who've seen him on the touchline in so many games. Yeah, his pressure had gone up last week. Clarendon College in possession. QP. Reed. Green. He's looking for Douglas. Down to pin up, does well to keep it in for Mona. Taken off him by Marquez Reed. Slips it into the path of Kaim Dixon. Dixon gets to the edge of the box. The flag is up for offside. He was offside there. The assistant referee had waved the flag very early, but referee didn't see it. And that's why he was allowed to run so close to the penalty box, did Dixon. Contest. Not sure why that yellow card was given. We'll get confirmation shortly. Fifth to sixth minute of the encounter. Clarendon College leading by two goals to nil. Jones with a weak delivery. Gordon does his up to Reed. Does well to win it back. Dixon looking for Hall. This contest is almost always been in traffic. Chip forward. Over the top. This could be an opportunity for Mona to get one back. They do get one back. Never done the quantity they possess. And Tenzer McKenzie, a danger all afternoon, finally breaks free. We have a match on. We certainly do, Ricardo. He's on his feet now, Craig Butler. That ball just went perfectly for Denzel McKenzie. Played through. Looks to be by Damoy Whitfield. And the Clarendon College players, they had a high line at that time. And he got through. And Romeo Daniels stretching out. Not able to get it. Denzel McKenzie on the score sheet now. That's his fourth goal for the season, McKenzie. Had a few close shaves last the weekend against Kingston College. Now finally he's on the score sheet. Here is Hall for Clarendon College. Maybe this game will finally come to life. Oh, look, the ball slipped through. To the absolute dismay of the entire Clarendon College supporting cast and the bench and the coach. Can't see how he didn't put that one on target at least. Hull picks it up for Clarendon College. Peralto and Whitfield with him for company. And it's Mona who win the throw. There's another look at it. Initially looked as if he would go to the far corner and then maybe changed his mind at the last moment. Trying to beat the keeper at his near post. He did early in the first goal. So I guess he said, well, let me have a second bite at the cherry. But that fell off the branch, didn't it? 
more hand position. Here is that shot. It's gone well wide. That's the one thing with them. Once they have the ball in those areas, they will be looking to shoot. And ever so often it comes off brilliantly. Hope is building for Mona, certainly. Hodges sends it long. Peralta cleans up at the back. Bernard fires up field. Hibbert was looking to head it on. Mona maintaining possession. No, no. Jamaica College leading the Manning School by a goal to nil at half time in their encounter at St. Elizabeth Technical. Matthew Hibbert with another high header has had a few of those since he came on as a substitute late in the first half. Simon screen at telling Zane Finnock bring it directly to me doesn't have the height to really bring the header down though one hour out the way Pinnock with a throw Mackenzie does well Hodges does better yeah, there's a sense of inertia, it seems, in Clarendon College's play. Not as active as they were in the first half. Clarendon College unbeaten all season. Another terrific Da Costa Cup campaign developing for them. That's a terrific ball. Over to Reed. Cutting the way. And now Mona with Pinna. Not a very good pass. Answer against him. Looked annoyed with himself after that pass. Understandably so. Denzel McKenzie, the Mona goal scorer on the turf. Crowd building up very nicely. Really nice turnout here. With the Kingston College Central match to come. Thomas de Hibbert. in front of him, picks him up brilliantly. There is not much better than Clarendon College when they play football like that. Hold to Douglas not for the first time this season. And they continue to rip Mona apart. It's 3-1. Mona was really trying to get in the game, but Clarendon College on that one break broke the heart of Mona once more. And that man, Malachi Douglas, calm finish after a beautiful run from Christopher Hall played him through. And Akeem Bernard through his legs. Malachi Douglas, the man from Kellitz, getting another to his tally. Now eight goals for the season. Make that ten for Malachi Douglas at two this week.
earlier this week in the Dakasta Cup quarter-final matchup against Dintil. Yeah, gets his Champions Cup tapping going. It's a long way back for Mona now. Platinum College restoring their two-call advantage. Dixon, he's their leading goal scorer. He really hasn't had a, a shot in front of goal. Sabina Park lighting up. Drive the play of Clarendon College, though. Carl Butler there, the tactical coach. If you're wondering why the decibels have increased, Kingston College, they make their entrance. The team, that is, in Sabina Park, as you see them in the background there. Corner kick. Coming up for Clarendon College. She loves it. Just now that pass from Marcus Reed to find Hull. Of course the play was broken up. There was a whistle on the play from the final delivery, but that was a beautiful pass as we've seen. We've become, a, become accustomed to from Reed. Here he is again, Reed. He's taken down. And a free kick coming up. They are struggling to match tries with him. Douglas for Dixon. Peralta needed to work quickly and he did just that. They're taking the throws quickly, aren't they? Mackenzie dispossessed. Clarendon going the other end quickly. Hall in possession. Dixon into space. Dixon! Oh, took too many touches of the football. Danger still not averted. Now Peralta can clear. Well, he's been pegging for the opportunities. He got one, and he didn't put it away. Perhaps a bit out of rhythm because he's really not been very involved in this game, has Dixon. But you definitely want your centre forward to, to capitalise when he gets such an opportunity immediately. White to Jones. Jones with the cross! Clarendon College brings Sabina Park alive, I'm telling you. And no matter who you support, you recognize good football when you see it. And this has been very good football from Clarendon College. Last week, the Kingston College Mona match was a treat. Today, the Clarendon College performance is a treat. Yeah. They have turned up. A look at the cross from Jones. 
diving header from Hall just couldn't keep it down Jones that played it in very fast so you can't blame Hull too much for bringing it off target did good to get in position but you definitely want to bury that when you get it but he has been good has Christopher Hull to assist on well, the afternoon they need a tiger Mona and they're looking to bring on Sean Layton to the wall Whitfield again Rapino Gordon not allowing Christoph Graham to go further forward and rightly so we'll get a yellow card though Des Moines Whitfield yeah a frustrated night for, for Mona evening rather for Mona and that was a, a, a defensive play that showed the level of frustration they're feeling right now just pulling on Christoph Graham's shirt yeah so Sean Tiger Layton replacing Adriana Vassal in the 71st minute Dixon once again can't get the shot away Thomas with a clearance comes out to Green Mona under serious pressure here Reed sends it forward again Love the ball with QP QP's cross is not bad and Malachi Douglas with the final shot is over the top was trying to place it into the far corner Mona being outplayed by no uncertain terms now and I mentioned earlier Ricardo that Mona their strength is how quickly they are able to close down teams but physically they've not been up to it and Clarendon College equally you know physical players able to maintain their attacking style of play throughout 90 minutes Mona they've faded so they're not able to close down and it gives Clarendon College so much space to really bring their passing game alive and it's a treat for our eyes I'm telling you Hall and the speed of the Clarendon College transition from defense or from midfield not really seeing a lot of play from behind from the back going straight forward for Clarendon College but when they get in the midfield they move forward with such speed and Mona they're trying but all they have tried they've failed so far Kingston College players warming up over the far side Clarendon College very much warmed and in rhythm two-time champions of the Champions Cup Kingston College only team to win it twice that must be nice Clarendon College the defending champions they head forward Douglas with a left footed shot that's gone wide it's become an, an attacking clinic from Clarendon College so far as they try to close out the second half looks as if it's Lenworth Teacher Hyde who will have the happy birthday and not Zane Pinnock so if this scoreline remains Clarendon College they should play stats in the semi-final of the Champions Cup would mean that course, Jamaica College at half time leading the Manning School the winner of that will take on the winner of the Kingston College Central Encounter so you could have a 
KCJC Champions Cup semi-final. They've always been special over the years, those semi-finals between Kingston College and Jamaica College. The pouring rain 2019 went behind in the penalty shootout at Kingston College. We're able to come back. Fortunes were turned though in the semi-final of the Manning Cup where they lost on penalties to Jamaica College who went on to lift the title. Hot to Graham. Graham taken out from behind by Mitchell. Free kick for Clarendon College. 2017, what a special semi-final that was between Kingston College and Jamaica College again. Tariq McGee thought he had the winner. In added the equalizer rather in added time. It was an indirect kick. He took it directly. And they got an indirect beating in the end, Jamaica College. Yeah, massive controversy that season. Hall standing over this free kick for Clarendon College. Ten goals this season, eight assists. Has been such a critical part of this Clarendon College machinery. Kenzie down again for Mona. Well, I think you need to add the two assists from today for Christopher Hull's tally. Yeah, 10 and 10 now. Mona behind in this one by three goals to one. The first goal coming in the 11th minute. Hall to Marcus Reed, who had done all the early work. And a big arrow coming from Akeem Bernard in goal 1 0. Clarendon College. They would make it two. Akeem Jones stepping that one through to Christoph Graham, rounding the keeper. And from an acute angle, finding the back of the net quite brilliantly. 2 0. That's the way they went to the half-time break. Second half now. And Mona would get one back. Brilliant work from Denzel McKenzie. Lovely, cool, calm finish from the number 10. And Mona, at that stage, thought they were in with a shot. That was a marvellous pass from Hall. And Malachi Douglas. Clinical, as usual, to restore their two-goal advantage. Hull with the free kick over the top. Craig Butler. Craig Butler said much about his hope in playing both Kingston College and Jamaica College in the season. And uh, as it stands, uh, they would go into that game with Jamaica College with back-to-back -back losses. And Jamaica College, they must have fancied their chances with that scenario. Yeah, Manning Cup semi-finals set for Tuesday, three days away from now. So not a long turnaround time for the this Mona team that across the Cup semi-finals set for Wednesday. So one more day for Clarendon College to play with. Not that he'll necessarily need it. And they'll probably want to get out there playing with tremendous confidence this stage like they have been for the entire campaign but once again Mona must figure out how not to go behind early in these big matches Romarian Thomas can strike it from here he does strike it but it's off target Positive to take away from how he kicks the ball. They don't normally go over the top. Sometimes they're a bit wide. That's just the human element, but he definitely knows to measure the height correctly. Graham. Jones. for Jones Gordon in the way Green Re 
Deep take north again. Free kick coming up for Clarendon College. Has been a stunning game by any stretch of the imagination. It's been an excellent Clarendon College performance. Marcus Reed, their number 15, key part of that. They have managed the game very well and have clearly been the better team. But I don't think this Mona outfit has shown up today in the way that we would have expected. Coming off that encounter with Kingston College, I expected this to be a blockbuster. Seen how Mona handled themselves, acquitted themselves very well against Kingston College, even though they were uh, eventual losers. But at this time last week, this point in the game, they were very much attacking. They've really been on the back foot since the start of the second half. Yeah. I think they've been on the back foot after the first three minutes. One thing is for sure though, if you give them the chances, they will put them away. Gordon for Mackenzie, the goal scorer. Mackenzie with a good cross and that is a brilliant intercept coming from Devontae Hodges. Really did well there. Scouts in the house. Red Bulls into Miami, two other clubs. Discernible from the shot a while ago. Those in the MLS, of course. Shane Gordon unable to keep that last one in. Just about 10 minutes plus whatever is to be added on for stoppages. shortage of opportunities for these players if they perform well. Whitfield for Peralto. Thomas. Reed now for Clarendon College. Douglas. Hull out wide. Douglas presents himself behind, does find him, goes for Dixon, back on to Green, Dixon again, face to face with Romari and Thomas, or seeing Pinnock, sorry, and the Pinnock receives a yellow card the gift he would have been hoping for on his birthday. Well, both of them, both of the birthday boys will hard, will hardly want to call Ledworth the teacher hide a boy, but you understand yeah, given yellow cards on their special day. I was wondering about that. Once a boy, no a man. I guess gift cards are a thing of the past, but yellow cards aren't. 83rd minute. Seven yellow cards in the contest. A peak for a penalty. Won't get it. Goal kick coming up. Down on the turf. Buckner contemplating what might have been was never touched. The referee was right there. Certainly, we've seen better days from them. 
We've seen much more attacking fluidity from them in other games, but this game, Clarendon College, they've really been able to neutralize them. Denzel McKenzie getting ready for this free kick. Goal scorer today for Mona, his fourth of the season. And dearly love to get a fifth. Along the turf into the box. Cleared away. Slipped out wide, looking for Hibbert. Hibbert unable to keep it in play. St. Pinnock is almost, well not almost, is in a defensive role now. Has been for a little while the Mona number 11. Scored 16 goals this season. Atiba Green down. There he is. Craig Butler does speak about total football and all his players being able to play different positions. Marquez. So Atiba Green still down for Carmen College. a lot of time left in this one and there's that substitution with Carlos Cooper Jr. coming on in place of Marcus Reed the Sportsman app moment brought to you by the Sportsman app the second goal for Clarendon College beautiful pass coming from Akima Jones and the finish equally from Christoph Graham rounding the goalkeeper and from an acute angle able to find the back of the net quite a goal from the Clarendon College number 21 that gave them a 2 net advantage before the halftime break they're now 3-1 up that was a quality finish from Christoph Graham really did well any level from such an acute angle bringing that on target something commendable there was a late curl on the ball because when it left his boot looked as if it might go wide Dixon doesn't control well gives Pinnock a chance Gave up a soft opening goal, the Mona goalkeeper, and they have struggled to recover from then. this one now to the finish they have managed the 87 and a half minutes played so far brilliantly clearly the better team today Hibbert up in up is down Gordon who is now in a more attacking position yeah. did play attacking midfield last season Rabina Gordon so no doubt about his attacking quality Denzel McKenzie 
with a corner right. kick and it's a good delivery the header is over the top from Daniel Mitchell might have fancied his chance from that range should have at least hit the target Mona's leading goal scorer he had 19 goals for Daniel Mitchell this season quite a few of those headers and penalties yeah he definitely should have put that one on the target 3-2 would have certainly been a better score line for them and given given them a, a, some measure of hope in the final two minutes they're about plus whatever the assistant referee or the fourth official puts on as added time yeah daniel Clark making his way onto the park the Carnan college number 11 they will also bring on deandre Callimore. The number 10. So Gallimore comes on for QP. And Clark is on for Atiba Green. Approaching 90 minutes. Plus whatever is to be added on. Hibbert trying to break free. Just had two many kind of college players around him was never gonna get through that traffic. Four so minutes to be added on. Four minutes for Mona to try and create a miracle. That would be a dramatic comeback. for Mona two on favorable results at a critical point of the season can start putting doubts in the minds of those players so a big job for the coaching staff to do to get them ready for that Manning Cup semi-final on Tuesday against Jamaica College mental recovery physical recovery Against Kingston College, they didn't have two important players, Dante Peralto and Kashane Gordon. They had them back for this game, but it hasn't made a significant difference to the result at least. Douglas loses out. Mackenzie looking to switch the angle of attack. Gordon unable to hold on to possession for Mona. And now they have a free kick. Two minutes to play in this quarterfinal encounter. First round quarterfinal Champions Cup 2022 campaign. Leon Bailey gets up off his seat. Off your screen, of course. Heading away. Not sure exactly where he's going, though. Might have seen enough. Perhaps to give them a pep talk heading into Tuesday. The Mona players.
Savage looking to finish strong. Seconds to go in this one. today and they are through to the semi-finals in defense of their title Mona's goal scorer is down the entire team could be down at the end of a second consecutive defeat in schoolboy football this season Craig Butler looks in high spirits though maybe it's the Manning Cup that he truly wants they'll be in for a fight on Tuesday against Jamaica College St. Pina and on happy birthday, his 19th, he'll look for redemption three days from now. Today, Karen and College find three goals, Mona won, and the defending champions are through to the last four. Let's have a look at the match highlights then. Clarendon College unbeaten this season. Mona coming off a 4-2 defeat to Kingston College in the quarterfinal round of the Manning Cup. Marcus Reed, influential Clarendon College player with a left-footed shot over the top. Mona would respond. Kashane Gordon back in the team, delivering a right-footed cross. The ball bouncing around the area. Captain Brown with a left-footed shot eventually going wide. Didn't get the coverage that he would have wanted. Carlton Brown slapping the ground in disgust there. Pinnock with a delightful pass here, picking up Gordon, but the control, the first touch wasn't good. And allowed Carlton College to clean up. Marquez Reed started this wonderful play. Picking out Hall out wide, Hall cutting in, holding up the ball well, Reed continuing his run and the attempted cross right at goalkeeper Bernard who made a massive mistake. Ball bottling in 1-0 to Clarendon College. A mix of a beautiful build-up play and a huge howler from a goalkeeper. Clarendon College taking the lead. This was fabulous play again. Akima Jones with the pass. Christoph Graham rounding the keeper who was well off his line outside of the box and curled it beautifully from an acute angle into the back of the net. The sportsman that moment for a reason. 2 0 at that stage, Clarendon College. So easy for that to have gone off target, but he really did well. Second half, Denzel McKenzie breaking free and showing great composure in front of goal to get Mona back within one. 2-1 at that stage, but Clarendon College very much in charge of this encounter and they just went back to work. Marcus Reed should have made it 3-1 right away, but his right footed shot wide of the mark, don't know, it didn't hit the target from there, but they would continue to press. Christopher Hall beautifully picking up Manakai Douglas and he doesn't make mistakes from that type of range. Beautiful finish, fantastic goal. 3-1, his 10th of the season, Malachi Douglas. And that's the way it would finish. Clarendon College defeating Mona by three goals to one. They advance to the semi-finals of the Champions Cup. 17 shots for Clarendon College, six on target, 11 for Mona, five on target, 34 fouls in the contest, 21 committed by the Mona team, 13 by Clarendon College. As you would expect then, seven yellow cards, four against Mona, three against Clarendon College. Thankfully, no red cards. Offside calls, three against Clarendon College. Corners, 11-6 for Clarendon College, 5 for Mona. The Clarendon College goalkeeper, Romeo Daniels, forced to make 4 saves. I don't think most of them were difficult though. 3 saves made by Mona's Akeem Bernard. Yeah, but he had that hauler and Clarendon College dominating possession. 62% to 38. They really dominated this match and at the end of it they come away with a 3-1 victory. Let's find out who the man of the match is.
Thanks a lot, Ricardo. I have the man of the match, Marquis Reed, number 15 for Clarendon. Congratulations to you, young man. Let me ask you this. How do you rate that performance that you had today out on the field? Go again, go again. That performance that you had, how do you rate it? Well, I rate it, um, or I say 70% because I did not get good all enough, so I can go again next game. Yeah, tell me about the goal that you scored, though. How did that feel? Well, it, it feel really great because the atmosphere and everything, it was a great goal to me. Yeah, well now you're through to the semi-finals, one step closer to defending this championship, this champion cup. Uh, successfully, do you think you have what it takes to go all the way and get it back again? Yes, we do. And to coach Lenny, I'd have to give him the credit. He trained us very hard to come out here and execute on the day. So. Well, well done. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, that was Marquis Reed, the man of the match. Let's have a chat now with uh, Coach Craig Butler. Coach, how would you assess this game? They were the better team today. Um, but a few players that were their head was not in the game. And I think that we lost. It's you win some, you lose some. This is the second for the season um, across leagues. I think that um, we just need to go back to the drawing board and focus and as a family get the thing done. Yeah. Do you think the boys were a little bit surprised by the uh, quick passing game of Clarendon College? No, as I said, remember, we played them before. Um, if you looked at the beginning of the game for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, we actually had the better play. We were winning all the balls, we were transitioning, we were getting our chances. Um, we didn't put them away. And um, eventually, we began to back off, which is against our game plan. And by doing that, we allowed them to play. And as I said before, if you allow a team like Clarendon to play, they'll, nip, they'll pick you apart. And that's what they did for the first couple goals. The first one was a mistake by the goalkeeper on the near post. The second one was a mistake again. He came out when he shouldn't have. Um, but, you know, he's my goalkeeper. And I believe in him. And the only way he's going to learn is if he makes mistakes. So if he makes mistakes at our expense, we'll forgive him. Because he has saved a lot for us too. All right, coach, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Congratulations to Claren. Yeah, that was a very noble Craig Butler there and graceful in defeat. Let's have a chat now with the birthday boy, Coach Lenny Hyde. Coach, good birthday gift for you. Yeah, man, definitely. They promised me it and they gave it. They delivered. Yeah, you have a one step closer now into the semi final of the live well. You can repeat as champions. No other school has been able to do it. Do you think that these boys has what it takes from what you've seen here tonight? Yeah, man. If we continue being humble and, and be disciplined on the pitch, I think we can achieve that. You know, we don't want to pressure them about that. We just want them to go out there and play good football as usual. You know? Yeah, you have St. Andrew Technical High School in the semi final. Uh, what do you know about them? Yeah, good quality team. You know, they beat uh, Manchester today, that's what I heard. So it's it's a good matchup for us again. So we just have to prepare for that. We have a game on Wednesday that we have to play against Man in the semi final, which is very, very important. So we, are, we are, have two, three days to prepare for that. So that's what our focus is right now. All right, coach. Thank you. We'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, man. Wednesday. Well, there you have it. Clarendon College, too good for Mona in this quarterfinal Champions Cup encounter. Gracious Craig Butler at the end of that one. A confident birthday man. Lenny Hyde, the teacher. Yeah. Clarendon College having another fabulous day here. And they get the better of Mona High. Another fine performance.